What's up divas and what's up divas? It's your girl April and you guys already know what time it is. It is Real Talk Wednesday. So this is a few days before Christmas and I'm hoping and wishing that you all have a beautiful and happy and blessed Merry Christmas as well as a great New Year. So yes, one more video to go before the New Year's. Next week will be the last video of 2015 for Real Talk and then we will move into 2016. So I will still be doing Real Talk. So, yes, I don't have a drink. I have them downstairs, but I didn't make them because I actually just came from the mall um, just doing some last-minute Christmas shopping with my kids um, so they could pick up a few things for their friends and so forth. And the hair that I'm rocking is the hair from... Um, Oh my god, I forgot the name of it. It's an AliExpress vendor. I wore this before in a video like um, a month ago. I think something like that. Um, but I, I really do like it. Um, gosh, it's show modern hair or modern show hair because there's two of them that sound very similar. Um, but I'll post it below for you guys. Um, really great hair. I really actually do love it. So, yes, today I'm going to be doing only two because the two are long. However, I'm not going to promise, but I'm going to try to squeeze in a third one. The ones that I've gotten are pretty long, even the third one, so I'm not even really sure if I can do that. So, before I just keep rambling on, if you want a Real Talk video about your life situation, you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please make sure to put in the subject line Real Talk so that I can address it ASAP. And if you want to change the name of yourself or your characters in the email, then you can go ahead and do so and let me know. So that way I already know that they have been changed. So, enough rambling. Let's get on to this real talk, okay? So... Hi April, I have been a subscriber from your first channel. Keep up the good work. You can call me China. Anyway, I have been close friends with this girl for 20 plus years. We now are aged 40 plus and she has been a bit of a slut. Just one example, she was with one guy in a crew for a couple of years and then when she finished, when they finished seeing each other, she slept with another three of his friends in the same crew. But I always liked her as a friend and just disassociated myself from that side of her. We lost contact for around 10 years and in that time she got married in which I attended the ceremony and had another two children. But two years ago got reconnected as one of my old friends who also she slept with. Um, she also slept with. To cut a long story short, I was so happy to have her back in my life but did not really ask to make but did not really ask too many questions about her marriage as I did not want to appear nosy or get involved in her personal business with her husband. And to me, they seemed okay in their marriage. Anyway, she and my friend got a bit too close. Unbeknownst to me, she only told me after the shit hit the fan. I tried not to get too involved as I have other family issues to deal with in which she was aware of. But always reassured her that I did not get too involved in my male friend's side of the story, which was the truth, as I had previous unresolved issues with him, meaning her friend that her so-called friend is dating. Okay? Me and her were still cool, but around six months ago, the guy ended up bumping into her husband and told her husband all the information she told him about the state of their marriage and etc. Since then, she has stopped talking to me. We used to talk four to five times weekly via phone text, but that stopped. I would text, phone, call, no pickup, and then when she did reply, it was always sorry I was busy, blah, blah, blah. When she did call back after around two calls or three text messages, she said she, said she just wanted a break from the whole situation, which I took as a break from me, even though I hardly see my male friend, so there was no chance of them bumping into each other. I was hurt and confused as I've always been a loyal friend to her, even when we lost touch. But for her to just drop me over something I had nothing to do with without a proper explanation really is starting to piss me off. Even though she does not speak to me anymore, in the one conversation we had, she asked me not to ask my male friend what was discussed, which leads me to think something was said about me. She says her and her husband have no ill feelings towards me. 
Anyway, if you were in my situation, what would you do? I'm thinking of writing her a letter just to express my feelings and let her know I'm accepting the fact she no longer wants to be friends. I felt like going to her house to confront her. I feel used that she only used me as a way to get closer to my male friend. And now they completely finished. And now they're completely finished. She feels no need to be friends any longer with me or have me around. Sorry for the long message. So we're going to call her Anna. Oh, she said China. Okay. We're going to call her China and her friend Anna. So China and Anna have been friends for 20 plus years. So now they are in their 40s plus. Hey, whoop de whoop de whoop. Okay. Because I'm 41. So, mm hmm Yep. Okay. And her friend Anna, um, China's friend Anna is a bit of a slut, a thought, a tramp, a whore, a, um, whatever you want to call it. A hoe. That is what she is. So basically... Um, China's friend, she has slept with um, many guys in the same crew, I guess, you know, like, you know, little posse, what have you. And so she's, she's known, unfortunately. But they lost touch with each other and got back in touch with each other doing a family crisis. It was a funeral, and I left that part out because um, it was in brackets at the end. However, they got back in touch with, uh, with, uh, with each other and, you know, took off where it left or still was friends. China basically stayed out of um, Anna's private life with Anna's marriage because Anna is married and Anna's personal whoever she sleeps with life which is I would totally agree with so you know Anna China's friend Anna hooked up with a friend of China's so Anna or Anna, I'm like to call her Anna I don't like Anna Anna basically hooked up with China's friend which is a guy and I guess some words were exchanged with China's um with Anna's husband and Anna's, what do you want to call him? Mistress, <laughs> mistress, okay. Um, and basically it seems like Anna is kind of like blaming it all on China. She says things like, oh, me and my husband don't have any ill feelings towards you. She stopped speaking to her. She doesn't want to be involved in the situation. And China is trying to figure out why would she stop speaking to her. She wasn't even involved in the situation. She had really nothing to do with her friend and her male friend getting together and bumping, bumping and grinding. And now that her friend and her girlfriend and her male friend are no longer fucking, China has no need to be around anymore, Anna. Anna has basically just chucked her off like a stale piece of bread and don't want to be bothered with her. So... China is basically wanting to confront Anna. She says she would like to write her a letter just letting her know that she accepts the facts that she doesn't want to be friends with her anymore. And then she thought about going to her door and confronting her. So, what would I do in this situation? Let me tell you something. Okay, friends come a dime a dozen just like men do, all right? And it is really nice to have a good friend, a best friend, that is to be said, who doesn't want to have a best friend that they can always count on, could go to when they're feeling down and blue, when they're happy? Just a good girlfriend in general. You know what I'm saying? It's always a plus when you have a good girlfriend because we all need that quality time with another female, especially if we're a female. They can relate some more. We can do things together like shopping, go out. Just girlfriend fun time. You know what I'm saying? So it's always nice to have a best friend or a really good friend who you can confide in and you can just be friends. And especially if you've been friends for 20 plus years, you really don't want that that friendship to, to end because you guys have been friends for so long however here's the thing I have had a few best friends in my lifespan because you know I'm 41 and they come and they go and this is my thing I'm not about to hound you to be my fucking friend if you choose not to be my friend over some bullshit that you stirred up then that's your business if you want to sleep around and fuck whoever Tom Dick and Harry and Michael and John and whoever else then go right a fucking head because that's not my business I'm not about to confront you and tell you that oh I accept the fact that we're not friends anymore because for me that to me is kind of like childish. If you don't want to speak to me, then I'm not going to hound you down and tell you that I accept the fact that you don't want to speak to me. You can either be woman enough and let me know the reasons why you can speak to me or don't want to speak to me. And if you can't do that, then there's really no need for us to be friends. And like I said, I've had best friends in my time span. And now... I just basically call them friends or associates. There's no more best friends with April because I've gone through my own bullshit in life where you have your best friends or you have your really close friends. And then sometimes they start acting real shady towards you subliminally, okay? And 
It could be some shit that you'll see somewhere posted or some shit that's just right there in front of your face. They start to act shady. And with the type of person I am, if you act shady towards me, I'm going to act shady towards you. And I'm not even going to act shady. I'm just going to basically outright confront you about it. And then I'm going to end up probably getting myself all worked up over some female that's really not worth it. And I say really not worth it because if you were ever a real friend... You wouldn't even pull no shady bullshit like that from the jump. So I don't feel like I need to write you a fucking letter, either type it or handwritten it, and mail it to you. I don't feel like I need to do any of that. Because, for one, you were never a real friend from the jump, from the gate. Had you been a real friend, we wouldn't even be going through this bullshit. I wouldn't even have to second guess why we're not friends no more. I wouldn't have to ask you why we're not friends no more. You damn sure wouldn't be pulling me in the middle of your bullshit with you and your husband and your mistress because you got fucked up and you got caught. And now you're telling me you and your husband have no ill feelings towards me? No, bitch. First of all, I don't have anything to do with this. So neither one of y'all should have any type of feelings or ill feelings towards me. However, here is my friend. Friends come, my, my thing, excuse me. Friends come and go, and that's just how it is. And I've had friends that we've been friends for 10, 15, 20 years. We have grew up together. And now we don't speak, and it's not like, oh, we stopped speaking because of bullshit. It's just because we've grown up, and we've grown out of each other, and we've moved on in life, and we're doing different things. So, therefore, we're not as close as we used to be. However, if it is a friend who you was true indeed close with, however, true indeed close with, meaning you were tight, you were always together, and then she loses contact with you, or you lose contact with her, and then y'all get back in contact, but she's on some shady bullshit, then there's no need for you to guys to rekindle the friendship in the first place, okay? Sometimes people say to your friends, and they try to get shit out of you, meaning... They're going to use you or they're going to get whatever they can out of the friendship. And when that shit is said and done and gone, then their friendship is out the door. You know what I'm saying? You are not even an important factor to them like that anymore. Now, like I said, I've had many friends in my past and now I'm 41 years old. I don't have no friends like that, okay? I have two friends, two, okay? My friend here in Arizona, Nicole who she is like my best friend, okay? We are always together. We are always, we kick it. And if we go a few days or a week without speaking to each other, it ain't over no bullshit or no shady shit. And maybe it's different for me and her because we are the exact same age, just as China and Anna were. However, we are on some totally different shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, she got her lifestyle and how she lived her life, and I got my lifestyle and how I live my life. And I'm not about to judge her for the shit she do, and she ain't about to judge me for the shit that I do. However, as a friend, when she do some dumb shit, you best believe I tell her, yo, Nicole, the fuck is you thinking? Why would you even do some dumb shit like that? Same thing with me. She's done it with me. April, yo, you need to chill out and be a lot nicer because that shit is not cool. You know what I'm saying? So, this is how me and her kick it. And she'll sit there and be like, bitch, you fucking stupid. And I'll be like, fuck you, bitch. And then we'll sip some wine and keep on talking. But we never have malice and ill feelings towards each other. You know what I'm saying? We are still friends. She got her lifestyle. I got my lifestyle. We are the same quality person, meaning we are the same people. We are kind of the same people, me and her. She is from Chicago. I'm from New York. And me and her are, we don't clash. But we are the same, kind of. We have, like, the same mentality, the same attitude. We, our styles may be a little different as in clothing-wise, but that ain't nothing big. That's nothing like, oh, my God, I can't be her friend over. But, you know what I'm saying? She is my good friend here. She is, like, my best friend, and we introduce each other as best friends to whoever we introduce each other to. You know what I'm saying? So... With her, there ain't no bullshit, there's no hidden bullshit. And with me, there's no hidden bullshit. But then I have other friends, you know what I'm saying, that have hidden bullshit. And that's just not my lifestyle. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm too old for that. I have five kids and two grandkids that I deal with. I don't have time to worry about the next bitch because you don't want to fucking speak to me. I got bills to pay, kids to take care of food to put on the table. If you don't want to fucking speak to me, then you know what? Oh well, you don't want to fucking speak to me. And it's unfortunate that I have to say it like that because a long-time friendship of 20 years is something of a long-time friendship. 
However, you don't want to lose a friendship that's been so long. You know what I'm saying? But when it's over some bullshit and the other person is just really not trying to speak with you or to work with you, then what are you supposed to do? You know what I mean? To me, writing a letter and asking her why she's not speaking to you or telling her you're accepting the fact it's just a waste of time. You know what I mean? Because to me, just in my opinion, other people may feel differently. But to me, it's like, kind of like dropping and like, why you don't want to be my friend? We're not in elementary school. Please tell me why you don't want to be my friend. Here's my, bitch, if you don't want to be my motherfucking friend, don't be my fucking friend. Because I ain't about to lose sleep over nobody who don't want to be April's fucking friend, okay? Better yet, thank you. Don't be my friend. Because I don't need to hear you call me. You ain't got to text me. You ain't got to borrow shit. You ain't got to ask me for shit. You ain't got to fuck with me and irritate me. And I don't got to do the same to you. So, I'm not about to write you no letter. And as far as confronting her by going to her door, China, don't do it okay because i'm going to tell you why you are now walking into kind of like what they call a danger zone you go into somebody else's house with beef and you may not feel like it's beef to you but to the other person on the other side of the door meaning anna she is going to feel like you came here to get it popping to start some shit this is beef you know what i'm saying she's already probably told her husband her significant other some bullshit about you and your friend and her. So that's the reason why she's saying, oh, her and her husband have no ill feelings towards you. Got me wondering, why would your husband have ill feelings towards me? Did you tell him I hooked you up with him or I forced you to have a relationship with this man? Or what did you tell my your husband to make you say to me? We don't have any ill feelings towards you. So to go over to her house is kind of like a confrontation. And then you got her, you got her husband, and you got yourself. And here's your friend on this side of the fence telling her husband whatever she didn't told him. You know what I mean? And then here you are coming and knocking on the door like... I need some fucking answers and I need to know what the hell is going on. What did you tell your husband that makes him feel like he don't need to have no ill feelings towards me? Because I didn't have nothing to do with what the fuck you were doing behind his back. That's going to stir up some more shit between them two. Between her husband and her. That's going to stir up some bullshit. And then who is going to be the cause of that? In this portion, you're going to be the cause of that because you went over there knocking on her door and confronting her. And it's going to get a whole bunch of shit stirred up that you really don't need stirred up. And not to mention, you don't really know a bitch's agenda like that. You knock on this bitch door, she could call the police on you. She could have her man come outside and fuck you up or a family member fuck you up. You don't know. It's like going to somebody else's house and you got beef with them. You know what I mean? And when you knock on somebody's door and you got somewhat of a beef, you got to deal with what's on the other side of the door. Meaning you don't know what they're going to come outside with. A gun, a knife, a bunch of people, you going to get your ass kicked or what have you. You don't know. And why put yourself in jeopardy like that over a friendship that really was not a friendship from the door? You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. So, in my opinion, let sleeping dogs lie and let that girl just be with her husband and to herself. Because even though you want to confront her and let it be known that you didn't have anything to do with it, you know something? It's not your place. Because at the end of the day, you're still going to be able to sleep and you know in your heart that you had no dealings or no problems with this lady beforehand until she started messing with your friend behind her husband's back. And at the end of the day, you're going to be able to sleep because you have no guilt. She's the one who has to deal with this, and she's the one who has to deal with these lies that she's told her husband, and she's told this mistress guy. She has to deal with it. And so, so what if she's used you to get close with, an, with another man? Who even cares? Because you know what? She's just fucking it up for herself. It's hard to find good friends these days. It really, really is. You got to watch your back because you really don't know, like I said, what a person's true agenda is. It could be friends. It could be a relationship, a man. You just really don't know. So in my mind, 
I think that, like I said, let sleeping dogs lie. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Because she's not worth your time. She's not worth your energy. And she damn sure ain't worth you coming out of your character to confront her. First of all, it don't matter how many times you confront her or let her know or say in front of her husband or to anyone. Yeah, um, blah, 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 blah. Okay? Regardless of what you say to this lady, she's still going to have her guard up. And regardless of what you say, it's going to be her side of the story versus your side of the story. So why even bother? What do you care what her husband feels about you? What do you care even what she feels about you? Now you know for a fact that she's not a true friend. And now you know the type of person that she really, really is. You know what I'm saying? People that you grow up with, they grow into their character. She may not have been like that 20 plus years ago. She might have been somebody different. She may have still been a slut, a hoe, a thought, or whatever you want to call it. But her friendship with you was probably more genuine. However, time has went on and she has matured and she has gotten older. And matured meaning not mature, like so smart and just so active and positive and, you know, mature meaning older, okay? But like I said, she's gotten mature and she's changed. Everybody changes. We don't stay the same. I've changed over the years, okay? Whether it be looks attitude, makeup, whatever, clothing, body size, I've changed over the years. I'm not the same person I was when I started YouTube 2008. I'm not the same person then, okay? I'm not the same person from 2012, okay? I moved to a different environment, so I'm not the same person. Things change, people change, and unfortunately, you had to find out the hard way. So now that your lesson has been learned, what you need to do is cut that bitch the fuck off. And if she ever get in contact with you again, just let her know. You know what, Anna? I do apologize, but I'm really busy right now with my family. So if you leave me your number or I have your number, I'll give you a call at my earliest convenience and leave it at that. You don't have to give her no explanation of why you don't want to talk to her. You don't got to give her no explanation of why you don't want to be friends with her. Let her know you are busy and you don't have time to speak and end the conversation. Of course, maybe she'll call you again at another time. And if she does and you feel the need to tell her right then and there why you don't want to fuck with her, then by all means do so. Be a woman about your shit. You know what I'm saying? Don't start saying shit behind somebody's back and being shady because she's been shady while she's telling her husband and her mistress other shit she's being shady to you because she's got you thrown in the mist this one thing i don't do i don't really have a lot of female friends because you know what they get real fucking catty and bitchy and i'm gonna tell you this much i ain't catty but i'm already bitchy and i'm already a fucking bitch sometimes so with your attitude and my attitude we don't click and i don't have tolerance for bitches that just be petty and on some bullshit so the best thing for me to do is just to have a really small circle of friends and my circle ain't even a fucking circle it's a dot like i said i got one really good friend who i chill with you know i have two best friends and i have one really um and the one that I have, who I'm with all the time out here, she is my best friend, and I know her really well, and she wouldn't do me like that. You know what I'm saying? And if she did do some shit like that to me, you best believe I'm going to confront that bitch, and then I ain't going to fuck with her no more. That's how I am. If you fuck me over one time, and we're friends... And it's some drastic shit. I'm not fucking with you no more. I'm not fucking with you no more. Because you never was my friend from the get-go. If you can do some some scandalous, grimy, trifling ass shit to me, then I'm not fucking with you. And that goes to say for the social media shit too. If you my friend and you on social media writing subliminal messages and think that April don't know or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Some dumb shit like that because I can fucking read between the lines. I'm 41 years old. I'm not fucking stupid, okay? But if you want to do shit like that, that to me is shady. And what I do, I don't fuck with you no more. I stop fucking with you, okay? You'll be like, oh, I ain't heard from you in a minute. Right, okay? And I'm not going to say stuff. You know, sometimes I will confront you, but... Sometimes, to me, confronting a bitch, it's not even worth it. Like, on some real shit, sometimes confronting a bitch or the petty, over the petty shit that they do ain't even worth it. Because I'm going to confront you over your petty bullshit, your shady shit that you done did, okay? And you're just going to deny it. And I'm going to keep trying to confront you and you're just going to keep on denying it. And I'm going to keep trying to confront you and you're going to keep denying it. We're going to go back and forth, back and forth. And you're going to have me wasting my fucking energy and fucking everything else my time so it's like you know what i don't deal with them some bitches you need to confront and some of them they're just so petty you don't even need to confront you just don't need to bother with shady and all that's why like i said very little friends because i've seen 
friends come and go and I see now the bullshit with a lot of people that say they're your friends but they really not your motherfucking friends yes social media and everything sometimes tells it all and it's fucked up that people let that type of situations or those type of things ruin their friendships or what have you or even little petty things like hooking up with a guy and you don't want to be my friend no more because you're not with him a lot of shit like that is real petty and it fucks up a good friendship because what's the old saying saying i'm not really sure the exact words however if you really my friend you're gonna be there with me to the end this nigga gonna come and go niggas come and go but a friend is there to the end you know what i'm saying and that's how i feel so just like with bitches now unfortunately that saying is really not true to 2015 anymore because like i said bitches say they're your friends be all key 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 laughing it up talking to you and then behind your back they talking some shit about your ass like bitch please okay i see the shit you done wrote don't try to pull that wool over my motherfucking eyes because i might wear glasses but like i said i might wear glasses but a bitch can still see and like i tell them don't throw shade at me because my shit you better have better aim if you want to throw any bullshit or shade my way. So, China, leave that bitch alone. Let Anna go ahead and stew in her own fucking sauce. Because either way, that shit is going to come out in the end. And she going to feel it. And then she going to feel fucked up because she got a good friend that she lost. And you never know. With the situation and the bullshit that she's just put her marriage through, she may really, really need you at a time because she might go through some shit with her husband over all of this dumb shit and you ain't gonna be nowhere to be found because she done fucked that up and that's a lesson well learned don't bother confront her the girl damn sure don't go knocking on her door asking for trouble because like i said you don't know what's going on on the other side of that door and don't bother wasting your time writing her letter regardless if it's an email or a handwritten letter don't waste her t don't waste your time don't because if she's a real woman she'll let you know Hey, I did this and I said such and such to cover my ass and I do apologize. But she can't do that. She just want to cut you off and cut all ties. And all that cutting you off and cutting all ties to you is to only save her own ass from her husband because she then said some shit and her husband then found out some shit. So she's trying to cover her ass. And if she wants to put you in the dirt by trying to cover her ass, then trust me, baby, you don't need a friend like that. Meaning she then threw you under the bus. Because she got caught in some bullshit. Some little bullshit, okay, with her husband. Imagine if y'all did some major crime shit. That bitch will have you thrown way up. Girl, you will be under the jail, okay? She done threw you under the jail if it was some major shit. And with bitches like that, you can't trust them. They don't need to be even associated with or even known as any type of friends or association. Mm-mm. That's why I leave my circle this small and I don't fuck with nobody. Because it's really not even worth it. So let China know what you think about her and her friend, or her old friendship with Anna. What would you do in a situation? You, are, you girls know shady bitches are all over the place. Shady bitches, shady friends, what have you. They say you're your friend, but then you find out they talking about you. Whether they talking shit about you to somebody else and it gets back to you. Or they talking shit about you on social media. In, sublim in subliminal messages thinking you don't fucking know. Or whatever. You know what I'm saying? What the hell would y'all do in a situation? And so here is the second one. And this one here, let's see. Hi, I love your YouTube channel and have been watching you for the past six months. I have seen you do Real Talk a couple of times and thought about sending you one, but was always too nervous because I am probably one of your youngest subscribers. I am 15, I am 15 years old. I would also like to go by La Lana. Okay, so me and this guy have been dating for a little over a year, and he is a year and a half older than me. This guy pressures me for sex and gets mad when I say no because I'm a virgin. And I feel that if I am not ready, then I shouldn't have to do it. This guy always says that we are grown and always tries to compare us to my older sister's relationship. He lies about the littlest things. He tries to get me to buy him expensive stuff even though I don't have a job. He is rude and disrespectful and has cheated on me multiple times. He had already met my mom when we were only one month into our relationship. 
Him and my older sister is the same age, and they are really close and hang out a lot because they both have mutual friends. My sister has a car, so when me and him are broken up, she will pick him up from school and drop him off at home. I forgot to mention me and him are in the same grade. One time we was on FaceTime and he got mad and he thought he hung up on me, but he didn't and he was talking about me really bad to his cousin. He didn't know that I was listening, so when I asked him about it, he just denied it all. Also one time he tried to fight me at school because I broke up with him. At my school, our classroom doors are deep into the wall, so you would have to walk a bit just to get to the door. So he threw me inside the door space and choked me, twisted my arm, slapped me and demanded we get back together. As soon as that happened, I called my sister and told her what happened, and she told my mom. My mom ended up having to take me to the hospital because I was badly bruised. My mom had told the school what happened, so when I came back, they put us both in the room to try to resolve the issue. But he played dumb and acted like nothing happened. My, my school believed him and not me and did nothing about it. After some time, my mom went back to being his number one fan, and if I didn't mention he is very attractive and has pretty eyes, so my mom would always tell me to get back with him. But he looks... But looks mean nothing to me. My mom doesn't see the bigger picture. He pops up at my house when he feels like it and is very aggressive. Every time I try to move on, he ruins my relationships and beats up the person. I I am very kind hearted. I am a very kind hearted person and believes in second chances. But now I'm just over it and I'm scared to break up with him because I think he will try to hurt me again. I can't talk to my mom because she just doesn't understand how should how should I leave this horrible situation? Please help. So Lana is 15 years old and she got a boyfriend who is a year and a half older than her. So he's probably almost 17. And basically he is pressuring her into having sex. He lies. He cheats. He talks bad about her. He tried to fight her in school. He actually did fight her in school and threatens to beat her up and other people up. And Lana's mother is just like basically his number one fan. His her, Lana's sister and him hang out together, and she's scared to break up with the, the boy. Here's my thing. First of all, she's 15 years old. My mother, my mother did not allow me to have no damn boyfriend at 15 years old. I got five kids, 23, 20, <coughs> 17, 13, and 8. Now the 17 year old, the the 20 year old and the 23 year old, they not they they not grown to me. They my kids, but they not grown to me. My 17 year old, he don't even have a girlfriend. He think he's a male gigolo, okay? He always be like, I don't need no girl, I don't want no girlfriend, I don't want no girlfriend, please. You know. But I already know he's a player, okay? Now, if I had a 15 year old, you best believe you ain't about to have no fucking boyfriend. 15 year old people, 15 year old teenagers, what the fuck? What the hell do you know about being in a relationship at 15 years old? What you need to be doing is your goddamn homework, okay? Not worrying about a boy wanting to kiss up on a boy, hug up on a boy. That's the problem with the world today. You see all these little teens hugged up and kissed up, booed the fuck up, you know, booed up, okay? And by the time they 15, 14, 15, 16, they pushing a the stroller. And it ain't their mother's stroller. It's their own fucking stroller with their own baby in it. Okay, this is the problem. And on top of that, at that age, day in 14, 15, 16, it makes these teenagers so disrespectful these days. They're so disrespectful because they think that they rule the world or better yet, we as grown-ups, older people owe them some shit. They really feel like we owe them something. Regardless of what the fuck we've already done did and still done did and still doing they still feel like we owe them some shit. And I say this all the time because of the way that they carry on, the way that they act, the way that they are as in general. You know what I'm saying? So, for one, I really think, Lana, your mother was incorrect about even allowing you to have a boyfriend at the age of 15. Because for what? You don't need a boyfriend. Me, personally... What you need to be doing if you were my kid, you wouldn't have no boyfriend. Wouldn't no boyfriend be calling my house? Wouldn't no boyfriend be coming over my house? That's not happening. Not going down. Not today. Not tomorrow. Not next week. Not, not, not happening. And for this little motherfucker to be trying to threaten you, cheating on you, trying to use and abuse you, trying to get you to be buying him shit, and then want to act aggressive and beating up on people, his little ass need to get kicked, okay? Now, if you don't have an older brother, I suggest 
that you go to your daddy. And I hope to God that he's in the picture of your father. Because somebody need to light a match to his ass and set it the fuck on fire. Because if your mother is his number one fan and you can't talk to her and you can't talk to the school, who else do you have? You know what I'm saying? You need to have someone in your corner. Now, me personally, you've already tried it with the school and he sat there. Here's what you need to do. Go to your counselor without him being fucking there and tell them the situation just like you've explained it to me. And let them know how your mother is reacting to the whole situation. Because had it been me and I had to bring my daughter to the hospital because she was bruised up over her young boyfriend... This little motherfucker, this nigga, would be in the hospital. And it wouldn't be no goddamn bruises, okay? Let me tell you. If you hurt my daughter and I have to bring her to the hospital, you best believe. Now, I just said on the other video that um, don't go knocking on people's doors. However, he's a minor and his parents are responsible. So, a bitch like me gonna knock on your motherfucking door because this got to do with my kid. Not me and my friendship, but this got to do with my child. And I'd be damned if anybody's about to put their hand on my child except for me, okay? 15-year-olds don't need to be going around abusing each other in relationships. It has come to that in real life that these 15-year-olds and 14-year-olds and whatever age, they don't have the patience and the tolerance level as we adults do. So they really don't know to, how to succeed at a relationship at an age like that. Nor should they. You really shouldn't know how to succeed in a relationship at that age. Because you should be wondering and trying to figure out what the fuck you want to be when you grow up and doing your schoolwork and hanging out with your own friends and having kid time. However, they are so consumed in their own little lives and on their own little gadgets that they don't know how to interact with people. So the first thing they do is they lay hands on people. They like to lay hands on people at that age. And I'm sorry, but... Lana, your mother has some serious soul searching to do because she's already known the situation that you've been jeopardized in. You have been put in because of your little boyfriend, but still she's back to being his friend because he's cute and he's got colorful eyes. Who gives a shit, okay? Because he might be cute, but there's a whole bunch of other cute motherfuckers out there too that are way better and are worth it. However, you don't need a boyfriend. You're 15 years old. And damn sure don't give your goodies up and lose your virginity to some little scumbag like him. So my opinion and my suggestion to you, because it doesn't seem like your mother is really helping the situation. If your father is in the picture and you can contact him, I would highly suggest contacting your father. Because like I said, somebody needs to light a match to his little ass and set it on fire. Because you keep your fucking hands to yourself. That's just the bottom line. And I would let his mama know that. But your mother doesn't seem like the type who wants to do that because she's so team whatever his name is. She's just team him because he's cute. Wow. Monkeys are fucking cute too. But if one attacks me, do you really think I'm going to keep that shit in my motherfucking house? No. Okay? My dog is cute. And he's like this big. But if that little motherfucker bite me, do you think we're going to be the best of friends? Hell no. He's going to be locked up in the cage, all right, until he can learn his lesson. But therefore, it's a different relationship because he's my dog. But if my daughter was 15 and her boyfriend did some shit like that to her, or if she was 20 and my daughter's boyfriend did some shit like that to her, I would go over to that house and I would knock the fucking sense into him, okay? And I'm going to just say it just like that. He would get the sense knocked the fuck into him for fucking with me on my channel. But, however, your mother is not like that. And now you're in fear over this little fucking teenager boy. So, here's the thing. He likes to go around beating people the fuck up. I'm not saying have him beat up. That is not what I'm saying. But, like I said, if you have a male figure in your life, a brother, your father, your uncle, your cousin... Yeah, then you need to call them, sweetheart, and let them know what the fuck is going on and who this little nigga is and how he acted. Because there's no need for anybody to be putting hands on you at 15. And there's really no need for you to be having a boyfriend either. That's where it all started in incorrectly. You weren't supposed to have no boyfriend. And I may be from the old school because I'm 41, 41 years old, so I know better and I've been through different things. But at the age of 15, and I'm going to say it again... You don't need a boyfriend. You need to do your schoolwork and your homework and concentrate and focus on that. Not on no boys. 
Boys at that age, they're horny young boys. All they want to do is unzip their pants and just slide into whatever they can slide into and go and talk about you to their friends. He's already talked major shit about you, cheated on you, disrespected you, used you, abused you, and every little thing else. You know, unfortunately, your mom's on his side. But what I would do, if you don't have a male figure in your life, then I would go to my school counselor my school principal, and I will let them know everything that's going on and how you want this boy um, dealt with. S something's got to go. Something's got to give. I'm just saying. I'm not really sure if they do order protections for kids of that age. However, he needs to be dealt with. And I would definitely speak to the school plus whatever male figure in my household or in my life and my family that I can reach out to. And as for your mom, you know... It's unfortunate, and I'm not bashing your mom, but it's unfortunate that some mothers just don't think the way that other mothers think. And I'm not saying think the way that April thinks, because not my way of thinking is always correct. You know what I'm saying? My way of thinking is not always right. There's no handbook on being a parent. However, I just think, like, certain things, common sense, you would realize that, you know what, with this day and age and how kids are today and how things have been happening, why would you want your 15-year-old to be out there with some boy? When I was growing up at 15, life was a lot easier than it is now. And my mother didn't allow me to have a boyfriend. So now, you know what I'm saying? 25, 26 years later, life is a lot more hectic than it was when I was a kid. And so I'd be damned if I'm about to let you have a boyfriend at 15. My daughter probably has to be like 17 years old to have a boyfriend, okay? And that's just how it is. And there's, and there's nothing in stone but when I say there's nothing in stone there's nothing in stone but it is in April's mind in April's mouth and what I say goes and that's just that but I just really feel like these teenagers today they don't have any morals and values like we did when we was growing up and it's unfortunate that they have to be like this and the way the world is 15 year olds don't need to do anything but focus on school because they go around, they run around, they act fucking crazy and they just don't know how to handle life. So they can't handle a relationship. So on that note, let Lana know what you would do as well as China and post your comments below. I hope you guys have a great Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. And I'll see you guys soon on my next video.